you don't want to see this, this is not like there's no blood, there's no gore, there's no violence in this. I'm only going to show you one time the actual freeze frame. But the reason why this is unfortunately uh, tragic, but something that you need to see is because this is the matter at debate in the United States of America when a police officer, a fully adult human being who is trained to protect and serve ends up shooting and killing a 13 year old boy. We have a conversation on whether or not the 13 year old kid deserved it. That's just how it is here. If you're watching from Europe and you don't understand, I completely get where you're coming from. But the reason why we need to look at this footage, unfortunately, is because people are literally defending the cops here in this situation. He was in seventh grade and he got shot and killed. Now that I've uh, given you the trigger warning, I'm gonna show you the video. Cop gets out of his car, 20 seconds out of his car, basically. He's chasing the suspect. He's chasing 13-year-old Adam Toledo. The other 21-year-old older uh, uh, accomplice is caught already. Show me your f***ing hand, stop it! He says, show me your f***ing hand, stop it. And the suspicion here is that, well, one, he's uh, in radio chatter shows that they're aware that he's holding his waistband while he's running. That's a signal that he might have a gun on him. That's a signal that, like, he might have a gun on him and he's, like, holding on to it while he's running. They assume, they suspect that he has a gun because they're responding to gunshots. They're responding to shots fired. I know he had a gun on him. I know. Just listen. I'm telling you what the cop's side is, and I'm telling you what uh, is going on. I'm giving you the information, okay? He does have a gun on him. He did shoot a gun, allegedly, as far as we know. I believe a total of eight shots were fired. They immediately respond and they catch uh, the 21 year old, 13 year old runs, drops the gun behind this barrier right here. The cops say, put your hands up, like stop, put your hands up. He drops the gun behind the fence and puts his hands up and they don't. And then they, they freeze frame before they show like the shots, but they put it. He put his hands up. Cops uh, fire. Eight shots were not fired. Wrong shooting, my guy. Wait, what? No, the eight shots is from Shot Spotter. Yeah, I'm telling you what the cops think is going on. The cop shot him one time, not eight times. Okay, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna restart from the top. It's a little confusing. Cops are responding to a shots fired call on Shot Spotter, which is an application, which is like a system that allows you or allows cops to quickly respond even before 911 calls are made to gunshots in Chicago. Some say that it is a, a, a gross example of uh, our surveillance state. They roll up on the scene. The 13 year old is complying after running. He realizes he's caught, he's compliant, drops the gun, as you can see here in the final moments before he's shot, drops the gun, puts his hands up, immediately gets shot and is dropped. The cop who shot him fires only one shot. As a matter of fact, now the reason why this is important, the reason why the one shot is important is because police procedure is basically mag dumping, okay? You're supposed to shoot until the person that you're shooting at, if you're ever in a situation where you have to shoot, you have to empty your clip. That's the normal police protocol. You don't shoot to maim, you shoot to kill. You're supposed to eliminate the threat. For those of you who don't know, that's what's supposed to happen. That's why every time there's police shootings, there's like fucking 40, uh, there's like 40 bullets on the scene. Like if he shot once and he was exercising restraint in that regard, then you're basically saying he went against the rules that you've set up. What you're supposed to do in every situation, if he's a reasonable threat, if he's an actual fucking threat, then he's supposed to get mag dumped. Anyway. It's a literal child. His hands are in the fucking air. He doesn't have a gun on him. And they shoot and murder him. The cop realizes he fucked up because he realized that he didn't have the gun on him at the time. Rushes to him and tries to fucking uh, uh, call for uh, a, a, a medical support. Starts doing CPR. But he is, uh, from what I understand, pronounced dead immediately. I mean, he's moving, but he dies. He's, he's dead. He got shot in the chest. He's 13 fucking years old. The reason why this is fucking insane for people who don't understand it still and, and there might be some people who are like i don't get it he like had a gun or whatever is because you get shot if you comply you get shot if you don't comply what the fuck you're you're restraining uh or or you're you're trying to break away you're trying to break free which is a understandable reasonable human thing to do okay that's why places like germany have laws where breaking free of prison is not technically in and of itself illegal as far as it contributes to your sentence and uh, as long as you do it without clothes uh where it's an understandable human condition to want to run away which is something that most human beings understand 
You created a culture of disrespecting the police. Now kids like him will disrespect the police and disobey orders, resulting themselves getting shot and killed as a result of the anti-police ACAP culture issues like you've created. Um, I would ban you, but the boot is shoved so far down your fucking throat that you have become the boot itself, dude. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? What are you talking about? Motherfucker, cops are killing 13-year-olds out here and you unarmed 13 year olds and you literally are making it seem as though it's it's the fault of people who are disrespecting the police what the fuck are you talking about yo coward cucks like you are the reason why cops do this and and have like for far too long been able to get away with shit like this no accountability literally no accountability this motherfucker's not even resisting he put his fucking hands up and he got shot and you think like oh well he was disrespecting the officer by what running away is that what it was it's never the cop's fault like they can murder someone it's not the cop's fault, though. It's still someone was disrespecting them. I can't believe that like, this is a conversation that we need to have it's still. Anyway, the part that we haven't even talked about yet is what the Chicago Police Department did. And if there is a if there is a police department that is notoriously bad and corrupt and violent, it is the Chicago Police Department. So this body cam footage was released two months after this uh, murder happened. There is a law that dictates in Chicago after another police uh, murder that was covered up, uh, whose name is Laqu Laquan McDonald, uh, that you have to release the body cam footage to the public in 60 days after a, a shooting occurs. But for the past two weeks before this body cam footage was released, the cops and the prosecutor, who is saying he was just going off the information the cops gave him, were lying. They lied to the public. And they said that Adam Toledo had a gun and raised it and was shot. They lied. They had access to the body camera footage. They saw the fucking body camera footage that you saw. And they still chose to fucking lie now he might have a gun on him but the moment that he's shot he does not he has dropped the gun and he's put his fucking hands up complying with police orders if the truth was enough to absolve the cops they would not have fucking lied despite seeing the actual evidence that we all can physically see with our eyes. So please do yourself a favor and stop trying to defend a lie that cops have already admitted to. I mean, these motherfuckers literally have a term for lying professionally in court, like test the lying or whatever the fuck it's called. Within police language, there is a term specifically for lying when you're in a court case. Video shows an officer, as we saw already, exiting the vehicle, chasing Toledo, who's running down an alley. When the officer catches up to the teen, he orders him to raise his hands. He yells, drop it, drop it. The officer fires a single shot to Toledo's chest as the teen raises his hands. We already talked about this. The teen drops to the ground. The officer rushes to administer aid and call for backup. Police have, uh, said a semi-automatic pistol was recovered a few feet away. Lightfoot on Thursday said there was no evidence the teen fired the weapon before he was shot. The March 29th incident began at around 2.30 a.m. when gunshots were picked up by a police audio scanner. Less than a minute later, police encountered Toledo, a 21-year-old Reuben Roman, who was tackled by police and taken into custody. An attorney for the officer accused of shooting the teen claimed Toledo was armed and the officer was faced with a life-threatening and deadly force situation and was left with no other option. The attorney representing the teen's family said Toledo was not holding the weapon when the officer opened fire. Those videos speak for themselves. Attorney Adina Weiss Ortiz said Thursday, Adam, for the last second of his life, did not have a gun. Protesters have already marched uh, in the streets of Chicago. Chicagoans are understandably very frustrated. I, from what I understand, there's already uh, precincts are boarding up, getting ready for uh, demonstrations. And uh, that's where we're at. Uh, currently. Here is the thumb, John Catanzara, the president of the Chicago Police uh, Union, defending the have actions of the officer who fatally shot the 13-year-old Adam Toledo. An important guest tonight, John Catanzara. He is the president of the Chicago Police Union. Appreciate you being with us on primetime. Help us understand why the union wants people to see this shooting as a regrettable but justifiable use of force by the officer. Well, time-lapse photo shows that that officer had eight tenths of a second to determine if that weapon was still in his hand or not period there's no oh dude then it's over then you know every time you have a gun you're it's up to the discretion of the cops to fucking murder you that's just how it is brothers that's how it works if you've ever had a gun on you at any given circumstance you deserve to be murdered that's cool never mind oh wait that literally doesn't happen kyle rittenhouse actually murdered motherfuckers and then got dabbed up by the police and drove back home. So clearly, cops do not operate like that all the fucking time, and they shouldn't operate like that ever, to be honest. Oh, someone has a gun? Murder them immediately. Someone legally has a gun and notifies the cop at a traffic stop for, for some fucking dumb reason? 
That does not mean you get instantly killed, but that's exactly what happened to Philando Castile. Someone has a gun and is running away, drops the gun, puts their hands up after the cop says, put your hands up. That doesn't mean you can kill them. If you are making a decision to kill someone in one, uh, in, in like eighth, tenths of a second, then you need to change police protocol. As the president of the Chicago Police Union, if this is your fucking defense and you don't even recognize that that is inhumane, insane, and the victim was 13 fucking years old, you really gotta, you know, someone that's listening in has to fucking recognize that this is psychotic. No way a rational person can say they can process that and their muscle reaction would be less than one second. The officer does not have to wait to be shot at or shot in order to respond and defend himself. He's not talking about the humanity of the situation. He's literally talking about the legality of the situation. And guess what, boys? The legality of the situation is not as black and white as you would think. In the United States of America, if you, as a police officer, murder a 13-year-old who is unarmed at the time, who's put their fucking hands up, you can probably still get away with it. I'm just letting you guys know. It's in the fucking legal gray area. Why is it in the legal gray area? Because in the United States of America, cops can shoot whoever the fuck they want, okay? And as long as they can establish a credible or rather somewhat reasonable fear that they had for their own safety or the safety of even others, not just their own safety, but the safety of others, i.e., Someone literally running away who is unarmed can be shot from behind and cops can still get away with it as long as they, like I said, establish a reasonable fear for themselves or others around them, they will get away with murder. This is at the heart of police accountability or lack thereof. This is at the heart of the problem. And that's precisely why this um, motherfucker is talking about this issue using terms like, well, I mean, it's just he had eight to 10 seconds like he's doing the right thing. There's no obligation whatsoever. So like he has no obligation. What about the obligation that you have to your community? What about protecting and serving the community? Oh, he has no obligation to fucking be a human fucking being, dude. You are the arm of the state. You are the violent arm of the state, which currently holds a monopoly on violence. You have to act like it. You have to recognize that that is a tremendous amount of responsibility. You can't just fucking be like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm scared all the time. So I have to literally murder people. If you say drop the weapon and put your hands up and you still shoot someone, then what's the reason? Like, don't even say it. Just fucking murder everybody. You know what I mean? Like, it makes no sense. Put your hands up doesn't mean anything if you're going to fucking kill someone regardless. And if there's no accountability in this circumstance, and I believe there might not be, what kind of message does that send to cops all around the fucking country? What kind of message does that send to black and brown people that have to deal with police officers on a daily basis as an occupying force? That's why I mentioned the one shot fired. There is no shooting to maim. It's not a police protocol. It's not a police procedure. If he is a reasonable threat, then he gets mad. Then he's supposed to mag dump. There is no in between. The one shot fired shows that the officer fucked up and knew he probably shouldn't have done it. And he still did it anyway. Remember, that's not exercising restraint. Exercising restraint is not shooting. It was pretty obvious when the officers got there that they probably had something to do with those shots going off. They took off on foot. The officers gave chase. You could clearly see an object, which is the gun in the offender's hand in his right hand as he enters that open fence area. Now, if you go back to the video from the school that shows the long shot, he absolutely has something in his hand. You could see him extending his right arm behind the fence and then coming up with an empty hand. So whatever he had in his hand was gone. The gun was what was recovered and it wasn't recovered later. It was recovered immediately. The officers saw the gun right away as soon as they started rendering aid 10 seconds after the shot was fired. But again, from Behind a fence to this in less than a second. In reality, an average human being could not block someone from slapping them in the face in less time than that, let alone deciding and registering. And I gotta grab it. That, it's a good reason why the officer only shot one. He would have been just... Shut the fuck up. This is what I mean. This is the heart of the fucking argument here. If shooting once is demonstrating restraint, then it should be a part of police protocol. It's not. You don't shoot once. You shoot to kill. You hit center mass and you fucking mag dump, okay? That's what you're supposed to do. This thumb motherfucker is basically saying here is like, oh, well, he violated police protocol. There is no in-between. There is no in-between. There is no like, oh, well, he shot one shot and he demonstrated restraint. Look at how brave he was. No, motherfucker. Then that means he should have not shot. If he was genuinely scared and he had reasonable suspicion, then he would empty out the magazine. 
An average human being could not block someone from slapping them in the face in less time than that, let alone deciding and registering. That It's a good reason why the officer only shot one. He would have been justified to shoot multiple times. We're trained to basically shoot two and reassess. There you go. I fucking told you. When you pull out your gun and you're supposed to shoot, you're supposed to mag That didn't them. even happen. Because by the time he had shot the first time in justification, he realized the gun was out of his hand. He didn't shoot a second time. Demonstrating restraint in that situation when he's already in the fucking wrong regardless, but demonstrating restraint in that situation implies that, like, it is not a justification for it. I can't believe this motherfucker's like, bro, the 13-year-old that this guy murdered, like, he could have murdered him extra hard, dude. Like, I, I love... Let me, let me just say something here, boys. Cops are so fucking cocky with a lack of accountability that this guy is one of the most powerful motherfuckers in the entire, in the entire state, okay? It may be in the entire country when you're the president of a police union you are literally just you can murder people and defend those murderers uh and and get away with it you can get away with extrajudicial murders and get away with fucking jailing people you can get away with a lot of crime okay he's literally a mafia boss so much so that one of your fucking guys can kill a 13 year old and then you can go on fucking national television just remove police from the equation for a brief moment just Remove police for a second and just think about what this guy is saying right now. This motherfucker is literally saying, my soldier, my capo or whatever, my soldier, my enforcer in the mafia did a great job murdering this 13 year old because he could have murdered him super fucking hard if he wanted to. He could have murdered him extra hard. He went on CNN and he said this two weeks after a 13 year old boy was killed by one of his fucking goons. Look at his face. He just doesn't give a shit. That's the part I just want to understand. Because look, this is an investigative phase. And I do understand uh, from my own reporting uh, that yes, the officer did immediately start to render aid. Um, there was discussion about you know, how their equipment was. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, he went and recovered the weapon. Now, here's the part I just want you to explain, if you would. If the kid was responding to the command, stop, show me your hands, drop it and as you say you can see from the camera that the kid threw it behind the fence if you believe that it was obvious that the kid threw the gun behind the fence as we see from the long shot from the school why are you so quick to say it was obvious that the officer had to shoot because there's no way the officer could see where his arm went when it went behind that fence panel it was totally blocked by listen chris I know you're a himbo and you don't get it, but what if the kid has bullet bending powers? When he put his arm behind the fence, he could have shot, he could have bent the bullet, he could have curved it through the fence and then hit the officer, even though it was no longer visible. Like people never think about curving bullets like in the movie Wanted. Motherfuckers who are saying he didn't know he didn't have the gun on him. Bro, that's the whole point of putting your fucking hands in the air. Okay, why are you guys saying they didn't know he had a gun on him? We understand that. We're simply stating it does not matter. It should not be that like once a fucking gun has been fired and you're responding to a shots fired, you literally are like, well, they have a gun, so they're gonna get murdered. Like it doesn't matter. That's why you wait. That's why you fucking wait. Reason, and I'll tell you, we're coming up on the 20 year anniversary of a friend of mine, Officer Brian Strauss, who was shot in the middle of the night by a teenage gangbanger, June 30th of 2001. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Yeah, okay. Brian didn't make- Well, what about a fucking adult gangbanger who's a part of the police force that you're defending, you fucking piece of shit? Get out of the alley that night. Again, we do not have to wait to be shot to respond. The officer had every reason- Hold on, sorry, I don't wanna, I don't know- ...to believe that that offender was turning and pointing the gun at him. Whatever, ever it had, you can Monday morning quarterback it all you want. But according to Illinois statute, you only need to have a reasonable belief. Oh, they just like literally show him. Oh, they, they show the entire footage here on action. CNN. What the and fuck? No person in their right mind would not say that they would have been in fear of their life in that same situation in less than one second to react on whether that gun was still there or not. And it was the same officer that rendered aid um to the victim right after the shooting that's an important fact as well do you have any questions well, you know if you watch but if you watch that whole video it wasn't just him i mean everybody that responded to that scene was cheering the kid on to, to keep fighting and stay alive Th this isn't like oh sick dude um that's fine then okay hey uh sorry we did a murder on you but we were cheering the fucking unmurder you after we murdered you is uh, a really good defense too you know officers they like to be vilified like we're out there hunting uh, gangbangers. Um,
maybe because you're talking about a 13 year old that you murdered and you're literally like, and he might have been in a gang, okay? Allegedly. Regardless, though, literally does not matter. You're like, oh, we're hunting gangbangers. You literally just did that. Like, you are literally doing that. You're justifying the murder of a 13 year old by alluding that they are a gangbanger and then turning around and being like, well, uh, you know, we're, we're not hunting gangbangers. Like, that's what people are trying to make us out to be like, well, maybe mo motherfucker don't play into the meme so hard then. You know, and that's not discussed either. This subject was a, a Latin King gang member. Uh, he did have a fresh tattoo on his arm that wasn't even healed. It was so fresh. Motherfucker, he was 13 years old. Maybe examine the reasons as to why a 13-year-old joins a fucking gang. Like, and also, none of this shit matters. You did not know. Like, that's the crazy part. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that the officer recognized that he had a fucking fresh tattoo, but could not recognize that he did not have a gun on him at the moment where he shot him. That's great, dude. That's literally great. What a great fucking reason to add additional, to compile additional evidence on top of it on top of a police execution to justify said execution. Things that the cop did not uh, have uh, knowledge of uh, at the time. All of this right now, the hypotheticals of like what the cop could have potentially thought was going on. And uh, you know, all the additional evidence, like the kid's a fucking gangbanger, bro. He had a tattoo, he had a fresh tattoo on him that we literally found out after we looked at his corpse uh, after murdering him. All of this stuff is done so that morons in the fucking chat who already are like, uh, you know, already have a point of view over black and brown people that live in uh, these underprivileged neighborhoods feel justified in in the actions that they think the police uh, uh took here they they feel like uh you know oh it was right to justify this kind of extrajudicial killing they literally just beef up the rhetoric none of it matters none of the things that he just mentioned here matter in a court of law or even matter in trying to figure out whether or not this was a justifiable shooting. That cop doesn't fucking know if he's a gang member or not. That's sus that's a suspicion that he has. It might be correct in the end, but it still doesn't fucking matter. You can't shoot people because you suspect that they're uh, gang members. It's racial profiling, motherfucker. We really need to go back, take a fucking step back as a collective, as a society, take a good hard look at ourselves when you see one adult murdering a 13-year-old kid and then another adult who's in a position of power defending the fucking other adult who did the murder and vilifying the 13 year old kid, okay? Because that 13 year old can't even fucking buy alcohol, can't even fucking buy guns, can't do shit, can't drive a fucking car. They're in seventh grade and you are on national television as the top cop in Illinois defending this murder by being like, well, he had it coming. The 13 year old had it coming. He had a tattoo, brother. That's crazy, dude. That's insane. The one part that's not discussed now or almost ever is the, the repercussions of that officer's justified decision to take a life and the, the guilt that they have to live with for the rest of their life. The mayor came out on a press conference today and was talking about how traumatic it was to watch this video and urging people to really take a second thought about doing it. Well, what do you think the officers who responded to that scene and were rendering aid and trying to save his life are now stuck with for the rest of their life? Oh, no, dude, the poor officers. By the way, that did happen. Daniel Shaver in Arizona was shot by, was shot and killed after a gung-ho psychopathic cop killed him with his own fucking AR, by the way, that, we, that he was using as a service weapon on that hotel hallway. That fucking cop now gets paid by the Arizona state for PTSD damages because being a cop forced him in his mind to shoot. He gets his pension and he gets a payment for PTSD for murdering someone with his own AR-15 in a hotel hallway that was begging, crying on his hands and knees, begging for his fucking life. That AR-15 also had get fucked etched on the side of it, by the way. That, by the way, was not allowed to be used as evidence. Evidence to show that this person was gung-ho as shit. That was not allowed in that. I remember following that court case very closely. They literally would not let that be seen as evidence in a court of law to demonstrate that uh, Philip Phillips Braille's word was, uh, you know, a, a uh, psycho who dreams about murdering people. Nobody ever take and then they got to bring that home to their families and then their families are. Affected. You're lying. I am not lying, motherfucker. That is a 100 percent. Oh, okay. Affected by I this. know it sounds Again, fucking insane, but... It, it's just a bad situation all the way around. The poor young kid, misguided, made a horrible decision that cost him his life. But it was justified, and the officer did everything he possibly could to the letter of the law and the guidelines of the Chicago Police Department. I understand where you're coming from on it, and I understand the sympathies. And I understand why you want people to appreciate how hard a job it is. What I don't understand is, 
Why does it matter? I mean, I don't know, and I haven't been able to confirm that the kid had any kind of gang affiliation, but even if you're right, why does that matter? For the record, this dude is literally like, uh, this dude is a psycho. Like, his Facebook posts were so bad that he almost got fired for his Facebook posts. Of course he didn't, because he's a fucking a sick freak, and this is the Chicago Police Department, uh, the, the Chicago Police Union, obviously, they're, he's, he's supposed to be a fucking sick freak. I'm gonna give you some of his, uh, I'm gonna give you some of it, okay? Since uh, becoming an officer in 1995, he was subject of 35 complaints, has been suspended several times, and two past police superintendents have tried to fire him on separate occasions. Sidney Roberts, the chief administrator of the Civilian Office of Police Accountability, COPA, which is the, the uh, group that uh, released the uh, body camera footage, called for Katanz Katanzara, or however the fuck you say his last name, to be fired. Um, the police superintendent, David Brown, suggested that he be suspended for one year, and, and now he is the uh, head of the police union. Because you fail upwards in the police department, especially in a place like Chicago, because the more brutal and the more fucking fascistic you are, you know, the better you will serve your job as a motherfucker who goes on national television and with a straight face says, we could have murdered the 13-year-old gangbanger extra hard, but we didn't. Why don't you feel bad for our cops who literally had to murder a kid? No, we're talking about this guy. The guy, the thumb on the screen. I'm giving you background on the thumb on the screen right now. I'm gonna give you some of his uh, Facebook posts. He's talked about how after a police shooting, he was like, seriously, it's time to kill these motherfuckers. He's like talking about murdering people. He says that it was about uh, people who shoot at cops. He said it wasn't about black people. He also described Muslims as savages and that they all deserve a bullet. But shit. Why, why does it matter that they were shooting at a passing vehicle? Nobody talks about the reckless conduct that led to this whole thing. But you know So why. it's okay you can shoot at Well, I mean, they didn't kill anyone. You know, that's, uh, so, you know, that's, uh, that's another thing, like, straight up. You know, John, you, you, hold on, John. You know why? I'm not talking about the preceding event because it's irrelevant to the legal analysis of what happened in the alley. I'm not talking about whether the kid is in a gang. No, it, Chris, it's, it's a direct no. That's not true. Because if someone's willing to shoot at a passing vehicle, there's a simple expectation that they're certainly willing to shoot at anybody, including a police officer. So it is relevant. But I'm saying to you that the condition proceeding for the officer in the alley in terms of his legal justification is that he is reasonably suspicious that the person he's pursuing has been involved in a felony. I'm giving you that here. They responded, the shots fired. They run. I'm saying I don't know why it is necessary to paint the kid one way or another. He answered the command the way he did. The officer had to make a decision. And you're saying the decision was justified. I don't understand why the fact that the kid's a gangbanger, because I believe that that gets perceived as you trying to smear the kid. What, why is there any need for that? I'm just stating facts. I'm not smearing anybody. That's just the facts. But how There's is it more relevant? facts. It is relevant what because it goes a, to the what mindset. What if he was a priest of, running down the alley with a gun in his hand and when told to stop and drop it, he did what the kid did and got shot? What it's if he was a 40-year-old right? male? Will we be having this? What if he was a 40-year-old male? Will we be having but he's not, dumbass. Do you not understand what you're doing? And it doesn't even matter. What if he was a 40-year-old man? It's still fucking not. Oh, my God. The point is, you don't fucking know. You're not supposed to do that. Having this conversation right now? Probably. What if he had a rocket launcher? Nah, but the fact that he's 13 makes everything different. That's not fair either. But here we are. Does it make it fair? No. But no matter who the kid is. Bro, he's literally pissing, shitting, farting, and crying because... He thinks it's not fair that people call out his police force that ended up murdering a 13-year-old. Like, this is insanity, dude. Like, how fucking cocky can you get, dude? Look, play this video in perpetuity when motherfuckers say cops are not entitled, when motherfuckers talk about police brutality. This defense, this defense that he's launching, comes at uh, this issue from such a profound point of entitlement and privilege that I just playing the video in and of itself is a good enough justification to understand how fucked policing is in this goddamn country. Sean Hannity describes Adam Toledo as a 13 year old um, man. We are awaiting the release this hour of Chicago police body cam footage that captured the fatal police shooting of a young 13 year old man by the name of he was about to say boy and he had to stop himself and say young 13 year old man brother this is it this is it look i admitted that kyle rittenhouse is young okay when we talked about kyle rittenhouse and motherfuckers were like and motherfuckers were like oh he's a fucking man he's a man like no he's not he's 17 years old he's not a fucking man okay he's a kid and i fucking said that at the time as well i want to know how sean hannity described kyle rittenhouse let's see if there's a hannity 
Well, this was Bondi on on his show. Uh, but uh, here here is uh, here is someone on Sean Hannity's show. The former Florida Attorney General, General uh, Pam Bondi, who served on President uh, Donald Trump's impeachment defense team, played the video. Hannity played the video of uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, said that it was a war zone. You got a four, you got a 17 year old out here trying to protect this state. She exclaimed, "He is helping people who have been injured. He has paramedic training for being a lifeguard. He's taking graffiti off walls, He's trying to mitigate the chaos out here." Once again, it should be noted that Rittenhouse is not from Wisconsin. The video speaks volumes, Bondi said, adding that the victims are criminals who were chasing him down before claiming that it's too soon to charge him with anything. We have a little boy out there trying to protect his community, Bondi continued. A little boy. Kid was out there trying to help people. Were people killed? Absolutely. But again... Hold on, I don't want to show the video. We don't know yet. You've got a little boy out there trying to protect his community. Should he have been out there with a gun? No. But should he have been charged with murder? We just don't know yet. And they charged him two days later. So, you know, it's a war zone out there. What's it coming to in these liberal cities when teenagers have to go out there to try to provide aid? Yeah, the uh, the, the fucking Chad 13-year-old man versus the virgin 17-year-old uh, boy. It's great. What's happening in these fucking little cities or liberal cities where little boys are, are taking up arms? Which one is alive today? Oh, the 13 year old man is dead. Uh, the 17 year old little boy who's a little child is uh, very much alive. If, if social media is any indication, there's a lot of chatter today about possible unrest. I hope it doesn't happen. But with Chicago's track record every weekend, I, you know, I, I guess you'd have to go with the odds, considering there are dozens and dozens of shootings and killings every weekend in Chicago, that uh, this might not be particularly good. Good stuff, boys. Good stuff. 13-year-old uh, man. Uh, thir young 13-year-old man. Notice how quickly they move from the actual murder of a 13-year-old and immediately jump the gun to potentially the the violence that may come as a consequence of this. Like you're you're already showing that you don't you do not give a shit. Like that part is normal. Cops kill thirteen year old boys and whatever. Who gives a shit, right? The fucking property damage that might occur afterwards, though. Let's hype. Let's hypothesize. Let's uh let's talk about the hypothetical property damage that's probably going to come as a consequence of the fucking brutal actions of the police force uh, here in Chicago over and over again without any accountability whatsoever. I mean, holy shit, dude. They bring up Chicago, but then offer no actual solutions. Yeah, this is why it's always laughable whenever motherfuckers are like, what about black on black violence? Because it implies that black people don't give a fuck about the violence that they're subjected to in their own goddamn communities when there are so many motherfucking organizations like Moms Against Violence in Chicago and, and numerous, other, numerous other organizations that straight up work to better their own communities and to escape the oppressive socioeconomic conditions that black people have been subjected to as a consequence of redlining and centuries of fucking racism. It's such a scummy thing to be like, oh, black people don't care about violence in their own communities, just about police violence. Like, fuck you, asshole. You don't give a shit, okay? There are so many local organizers that specifically work on this. The real problem is that there is no structural, there's a structural solution that is a necessity here, okay? Because there's a structural problem. It is a lack of resources. It's after school programs being shut down. It's uh, a terrible schooling programs in CPD, in the, or, or sorry, in the Chicago public school system, which is 90%, which houses 90% of the black and brown students in the entire state of fucking Illinois, but only gets 70% of the funds in the entire state. The, the, the problem is, is that Rahm Emanuel, liberal mayor, right? Liberal fucking mayor, Rahm Emanuel, selling off certain parts of the South Side so that they can create a police academy rather than utilize that area or utilize the funds rather that you get from uh selling off certain parts of chicago to reinvest into schools to reinvest into programs that will keep kids off the streets but no more policing is a necessity we need to give cops uavs drones rocket launchers that's the only way we will keep the blacks in check that's the fucking mentality that these motherfuckers have no one wants to investigate the socioeconomic conditions that cause this sort of crime that cause sort of behavior. 13 year old kid is like joining a fucking gang. Why? You think a 13 year old knows better? You think a 13 year old has the mental fortitude to, to fucking, uh, I don't know, uh, make these sorts of decisions on his own? You think it's because people are just bad? You think this 13 year old's evil? No, 13 year old young man, sorry. 13 year old man, by the way. Um, I'm gonna move away from uh, this stuff. I'm sorry, I've, I've like uh, talked about this uh, for the past hour and 40 minutes pretty much. I've talked about this over and over again. I'll talk more about it uh, at a later date as well. But um, uh, I, I want to look at this Joe Rogan uh, thing. I want to move on to a little bit lighter stuff here.